Okay, and what kind of litter do you use, Cheryl? Um, the scoop. The scoopable kind? Okay. Is there a brand name? Did you buy what no, was on sale? No, just whatever is on sale. Whatever's on sale. Yeah. Okay. Um, just something you might want to think about again as far as just, you know, kitties um, like consistency. So if you find a litter that you like and that your cat likes, you know, you're probably better off trying to stay with that if you can. Because, um, again, it's just one of those things that cats like. So um, how often did you scoop? Oh, probably once a week. Once, once a week. Okay. And um, how many boxes did you have? Just one. Just one? Okay. Another, you know, you were really fortunate that you didn't have any issues with your kitty because, you know, he was a male, intact, um, and obviously, you know, scooping once a week um, is something that, you know, we would encourage you to do that more often. That's his toilet, and it's kind of like a person's uh, restroom. Obviously, we flush our toilets, and cats want to have a clean toilet as well. So just a thought because, you know, um, again, this is, these are all things that might set up uh, for a problem in the future. Mm -hmm. So, um, how big was your house? Um, it's a two-story house. Two-story house? Okay. And that's the other thing, too, is that, you know, again, from a perspective of experts, they'll, they'll encourage you to maybe have one on each level, you know, for the kitty. So, um, now, is there anything that, you know, maybe I didn't ask about that you want to share? No, he, he's not a lab cat, he, you know. He, okay. He's not a lab no. cat. Okay. Um, I mean, you can pick him up, but he's, he doesn't uh, stay there all the time. Okay. Was he allowed on countertops? Yeah. Okay. Um, and was there anything that you didn't allow him on? No. Okay. And did he like to play? Yep, he and loves to play. What kind of things did he like to play with? Um, just regular cat toys. The, the uh, feather on a rope. Or, okay, you know. feather on a rope. Yeah. Okay. Um, use a laser light at all? No. And did he like to be brushed? No. No? No, he doesn't like to be brushed. Okay. All right. So if you could pick the home for this guy, where would you like to see him go? Do you think he should go with kids? Do you think he should go with other cats? You know? Um, with kids, I think. Okay. okay. We could try him with other cats. I'm not real sure about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, um, Cheryl, that's all we need for today. But, you know, now there is no charge to bring your kitty in, but if you can bring a, leave a cash donation at all, we would really appreciate it. Obviously, anything that you would give would, would add or help to, you know, the cost that we put into these animals. So, you know, it's okay if you can't do that, but, you know, if you can, that'd be great too. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Uh, what we'd like to do in this segment is actually show you check um, how we check in a cat and the amount of time and energy and obviously what we need to do to make this happen. This is a process that happens for every cat that comes into the building. So I actually wanted um, the public to see how this is done. Um, I'd like to introduce my staff. This is uh, Gretchen who is my intakes operation manager and this is Renee who is one of our caregivers. So um, we'll just kind of get started and um, who's this kitty? She came in as a stray, okay. so... So we don't have a name, although I see that they've already called her uh, Carolina. So this is Carolina, so um, I'll just step off camera and I'll let the staff uh, kind of do what they do and, you know, I'll be explaining some of this information as well as Gretchen. So, okay? Okay, so what, what I'd like you guys to do, if you could please, is just kind of explain what you're sure. doing as though you're actually showing this to someone? Okay, so we basically check everything over on the cat. We will look over, um, or dog, whatever we're checking, and we look over their eyes. We check their ears um, to make sure that they don't have any mites or they're not dirty and need to be cleaned. We'll swab them out. Um, her eyes look good. We also check their gums and their teeth where we look all the way back, see how much tartar they have on their teeth, see if they have any missing teeth, any inflammation. Now, is this also how you would age a cat? Gretchen? Absolutely. When we look at their teeth, we look at how much tartar is on their teeth, how much wear and tear that they have, and groovage in their teeth, and then we estimate an age for this cat. For her, we had guess, we we're guessing her about three years old. Okay. Um, and I noticed that you were checking out those ears. Now, is that typical of a stray to come in with clean ears, or is it kind of like half and half? Or uh, Absolutely not. Most of the strays that come in will have uh, ear mites, which you can usually, you can look in the ears with an otoscope and you can actually see them. Um, but otherwise, it's very common if they have ear mites to have a very um, crusty black dirt that's in the ears too. Okay. Her ears now, are actually 
clean, which is not normal. It's also not very common for a cat that comes in as a stray to be wearing a collar, which she has on, but no tags on that collar. Right. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, I'd like to share as far as just the sheer volume of cats that come in. We get about 1,200 cats a year. We get about 2,500 animals a year. Uh, it's about 50-50 as far as strays versus surrenders. So, um, you know, this kitty obviously belonged to somebody. It has a collar on it. And, um, you know, whether someone intentionally let it out or, or it got out is questionable. What we're doing right now is just checking for flea dirt or fleas. Okay, and how do you do that, Renee, as far as um, what would you see? We're combing through their coat um, to see if there's any um, fleas that actually would come out with the, the comb or if there would be any remnants mm -hmm. of dirt in there. And she's got a clean coat, so, okay. so she's okay. Mm -hmm. So obviously she doesn't have fleas at this point. Okay. So now we're going to take her temperature. We always will um, take a temperature on them before we give a distemper vaccination. We want to make sure they're not running a fever and that they seem to be healthy before we would vaccinate them. Now this obviously is not a pleasant experience for the kitty. Um, and you'll notice that there has to be some restraint put on the animal just because, again, this is just a very awkward you know procedure for the cat and it's and it's not comfortable and um, what is a, the normal temperature of a cat Gretchen? The high end of normal for a temperature on a cat is 102.5 usually anywhere between 100 and 102.5 um, is okay to vaccinate that okay. cat. Okay. So she's 101.9 so we're gonna go ahead and drop a vaccination for her. Now you had mentioned an otoscope before do we have one of those? Yes. Okay. Um, what, what kind of equipment do you guys have back here as far as, um, you know, checking to be able to check these animals out and, um, um, just to basically look them over, we have our flea combs, our nail trimmers, needles, syringes, vaccinations. We've got a scale that we're going to weigh her on so that we can get an accurate weight to give her some deworming. Okay. And, um, we've got a microscope back here if we need to check a, a stool sample or fecal. And I will mention that we're in desperate need of a new microscope <laughs> in case anybody is interested. Obviously it's a very expensive piece of equipment. So we just kind of pull up on the scruff here and give a vaccination right into their scruff. Now what is a distemper vaccination? What what exactly is that and, and what kind of combinations does that have in the We in the have uh, three, a uh, combination of three different things on our uh, distemper vaccination. It, it vaccinates for uh, feline pan leukopenia, which is distemper. It also f vaccinates for the rhinotracheitis, rhinotracheitis and Khaleesi virus, which are uh, things that they can get upper respiratory from. Um, and we do, if they're here long enough, um, we'll give them a series of two vaccines so that their current, their first vaccine does need to be boosted in three to four weeks after the initial. Now, this, you'll notice that this is a team effort. Um, this is two caregivers working together, and obviously they need to do that because one needs to handle the cat themselves. Obviously, one's giving the vaccination. You'll notice that Gretchen is recording everything down on a sheet, um, and that is something that stays with the cat. This is, this is the paper trail that um, they're, they're doing right now. So, uh, and Gretchen, what are you doing here? This is the dewormer that we give. We, any uh, animal that comes in, whether they are a stray or surrender, we will just give them a basic dewormer across the board. This is a very general dewormer. It basically just deworms for round worms. Um, and then if the animal is continuing to show signs of diarrhea after they've been here for a few days, uh, we'll run a, a stool sample or a fecal on them to see if they've got other types of parasites. But the most common one is the round worms. So as far as cost wise, it's actually much cheaper to just deworm every animal than it is to just run a fecal on Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And I, I want to mention too that the staff is moving really, really quickly through this process. Part of the reason is, is because the sheer volume of animals, they've got to do this and as she is quick declawed in the front. So we're not going to trim any front nails on her, but we're going to trim the back ones on her. 